Well, today is the 16th Sunday of Ordinary Time, and just a couple of things. One, I'll just briefly mention the life of Saint Macarena the Younger. I wasn't familiar with this person, but um, she, came, she comes from a family of saints, two great ones, uh, <clears throat> who I'll mention. So she was born in, she died in the year 380 AD and was born in Cappadocia to a family of saints. Uh, her mother was Saint Amelia and her father was Basil the Elder. Her grandmother was Saint Macrina the Elder after whom she was named. Uh, her, whole, her parents had 10 children. Macrina was one of the oldest and received an excellent religious education from her mother. Her parents betrothed her to a pious youth, but he died before the marriage took place. Uh, among her siblings, now these are the two great siblings she had. Among her siblings was Basil the Great and Gregory of Nyssa. These are two great saints in the Eastern Church. Um, both the Cappadocian fathers and doctors of the church. Uh, Saint Peter of uh, Sebaste and Saint uh, Theosevia. Uh, this family was loaded with sanctity, that's for sure. Um, when their father died, Macrina became the main support for the family. It was Macrina who uh, profoundly influenced the spiritual discipline of her younger brothers. When all her siblings were grown, Macrina convinced them, uh, her mother to give up their family belongings, set their servants free, and convert their home into a monastery. Many of their servants joined them in the spiritual pursuit uh, they all lived together as a family, sharing all things in common. See, if this stuff was repeated down through the centuries, we would never have had slavery. Or would have ended slavery just like that. Anyways, this is the, the sins of the human heart. Huh? Uh, many of their, so um, the biography of St. Macrina was written by her brother, St. Gregory. Her feast day is today. So this is a great woman, a great saint in the life of the church. Uh, that most people are probably not familiar with, but the profound influence that a sister can have in her brothers, um, whose influence has been down through the centuries untold still today. Their writings influence so many, hundreds and thousands. So, uh, St. Macrina. So before Mass begins, I've waited sort of unintentionally till 10 o'clock. I just want to review the reception of the Holy Eucharist protocols. So just uh, <clears throat> a few things. <clears throat> uh, communion starts at the back. All right, and it's in one line. Uh, but if you want to receive communion on the tongue, please wait till those who have received on the hand come first. Because I've noticed that some people just come for communion on the tongue whenever. But please wait till last. I want the two groups separate and those who are on the hand first. Now, you may see this differently in other parishes. This is the way I've chosen to do it here. Um, and... <clears throat> Uh, when you come up, of course, uh, if you're coming from this side, the opposite side to my side, please do not cut back. This has been reduced about 98%, but it needs to be reduced 100%. So if you come from this side to me, then you need to go all the way around and then come back up the middle or come back up the side. So there's no crossing. People do not cross each other and break physical distance. Uh, simple things like this can help a lot uh, in the long run. And, and it's not odious to do this. So I'm, you know, kind of repeating this, but it needs to be repeated. Uh, also, when you come up, of course, and you, if you have a mask on, you're receiving the Eucharist, you, you need to lower your mask or, you know, raise your mask to put, if you're receiving on the, tongue, uh, on the hand, you need to have your mask down. Some people resist to put their mask down. If you don't put your mask down, uh, we cannot give you communion because you have to put it in your mouth immediately, not walking away. Uh, immediately, while standing there, you should put communion in your, in, on your tongue right away. Uh, COVID or no COVID, that's, that's the, the guideline. Don't walk away with communion and put it in your, uh, our Lord in your mouth, you know, on your way down, down the aisle. Or if you receive on the tongue, of course, you have to. It makes perfect sense. But it's the idea of lowering your mask or even, you know, probably lowering your mask is the best way. Um, and I think I've covered all the points that need to be covered. So just avoid the crossing. Uh, w walk around when you receive and down the aisle or on the side. Yeah. Okay. I think that's good. Okay. Some here. 
praise the everlasting King. Praise Him for His grace and favor to His people in distress. Praise Him still the same as ever, clothed to chide and swift to bless. Alleluia, Alleluia, glorious in His faithfulness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that, made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commandments. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. There is no God besides you, Lord, whose care is for all people, to whom you should prove that you have not judged unjustly. For your strength is the source of righteousness, and your sovereignty over all causes you to spare all. For you show your strength when people doubt the completeness of your power and you rebuke any insolence among those who know it. Although you are sovereign in strength, you judge with mildness, and with great forbearance you govern us, for you have power to act whenever you choose. Through such works you have taught your people that the righteous must be kind, and you have filled your children with good hope because you give repentance for sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord, you are good and forgiving. Lord, you are good and forgiving. You, O Lord, are good and forgiving, abounding in steadfast love to all who call on you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my cry of supplication. Lord, you are good and forgiving. All the nations you have made shall come and bow down before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. For you are great and do wondrous things. You alone are God. Lord, you are good and forgiving. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Turn to me and be gracious to me. Give your strength to your servant. Lord, you are good and forgiving. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds a parable. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. But while everybody was asleep, an enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and then went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared as well. And the slaves of the householder came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? Where then did these weeds come from? He answered, An enemy has done this. The slaves said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he replied, No, for in gathering the weeds, you would uproot the wheat along with them. Let both of them grow together until the harvest. And at harvest time I will tell the reapers, Collect the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus put before them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The Gospel of the Lord. I've got a science question for you this morning. Do you know that a mustard seed's DNA cannot change. A mustard seed, its DNA cannot change. 
This is important because today, scientists have discovered how to prevent bugs from eating vegetables. And the way this works is by changing the DNA. For example, to get corn to be perfect corn that bugs won't eat, you have to cross corn DNA with cucumber DNA. And the way to cross these two DNAs is, is to introduce it through a virus. So you actually get the corn DNA sick, and then will accept the DNA of cucumber and end up as perfect corn that bugs won't eat. But the mustard seed's unique. Its DNA does not change. So a mustard seed refuses all viruses. And since the time of Christ, I think farmers have sensed something special about mustard seeds because when a mustard seed is planted in soil, it refuses to be affected by any other plants around it as well. And it can still flourish in very poor conditions. And last week, I spoke about how opening up my grandpa's Bible was a time of good soil in which God performed a miracle in my life. I had a St. Augustine experience. And this was the key insight that every time we open up our Bibles, it's that time of good soil, and God can work a miracle in our lives. And today, the mustard seed helps us to see what this kind of miracle can look like in our lives. I was reading a famous Russian book recently. It's called The Way of the Pilgrim. And the author shares that he was addicted to alcohol. And he had tried everything, but he could not overcome this sin. And one day he met a monk who advised the man whenever he felt an addiction to alcohol, whenever he felt tempted to drink, to simply open up his Bible and read a chapter from the Gospels. And the monk gave him a Bible, and the man left very disappointed because he thought he would have received some profound insight from this Russian monk, but he just gave him a Bible. And so when the man went home, he put the Bible into a drawer and he planned to never look at it. But when the weekend came, he felt this temptation, he wanted to go get a drink. And so he was in search of some money, and he opened up the drawer, and he saw the Bible. And he remembered what the monk shared. Just open up the Bible and read a chapter from the Gospels. And so he thought, I might as well just give it a try. And he opened up the Bible, and he ended up reading several chapters of the Gospel of Matthew that night, falling asleep without getting drunk, without having any alcohol. And the author shares with joy that 20 years after writing this book, he has not fallen into the sin of getting drunk since. And he reads the Bible every single day. And what's so inspiring about this man's story is that precisely in his weakest moment, in this addiction that he had to drinking alcohol, he opened up the Bible and God performed a real miracle in his life. Now, we might not be struggling with alcohol, but all of us here have something that we struggle with. There's, all, there's always something, a weakness in our lives that can often lead to sin. Maybe some of us bring the same sins over and over again to confession. And there's no shame in having this because it's something we all experience here on earth. And these sins, they act like viruses that can make us feel hopeless at times. I don't know about you, but the thought of opening up the Bible in the midst of feeling this weakness in my life, in the midst of a struggle, and actually overcoming that trial. That, to me, seems like a miracle in my life. And here's where the mustard seed can be so fascinating, is that, remember how I shared about the mustard seed and its DNA? So a mustard seed shows its power by refusing any viruses into its DNA. And scripture, too, shows its power by refusing to allow any sin to destroy our lives. It's like scripture and sin, it's like they're arch rivals, like bitter enemies. They're at war with each other for our hearts. And every time we open up the Bible, 
and allow God's word to come into our lives, that's the experience of scripture winning the battle for our hearts. That is why this man decided to open up the Bible every single day, because he wanted to win the battle. He wanted God to work a miracle in his life. That's why last week I shared two things. I took on Father Larry Richard's challenge, no Bible, no breakfast, no Bible, no bed. And then I started listening to this Truth and Life audio Bible every day because I want to win those battles. I want God to work a miracle in my life every day. And that's why St. Paul says in today's second reading that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the inspired author of Scripture. And He wants to help us in our weakness. And so He gives us the inspired Word of God, so that we may open it up in these real experiences of struggle in our lives and allow His grace to come in and experience a miracle. So God wants us to win these battles. God wants to work miracles in our life every day. I don't know about you, but this idea of having a game plan, when we really experience struggles in our life, when we're really face-to-face with our weaknesses, when we feel tempted to fall into sin, Having a game plan can just seem so difficult. But the Bible is giving us a game plan today. St. Paul, he says that all scripture is inspired by God and contains the instructions that we need for a life of holiness. And what's cool for all the science nerds out there is that if you, if you know the definition of DNA, it's a molecule that contains all the instructions for an organism to have life, to flourish. So scripture is like DNA for our holiness. Scripture gives us the instructions that we need for a life of holiness. And so this is a game plan that I feel courage to commit to right now. A game plan of just opening up the Bible whenever we experience those struggles in our life and allow God to give us new hope, new inspiration. Just to conclude, I'm remembered of a, I remember a time in seminary in which I had a friend go to the Holy Land. She came back and she actually gave me a mustard seed from the Holy Land. I thought it was really cool and so I put it away in my drawer at seminary and I planned to bring it out one day at a homily. But I ended up losing this mustard seed and reflecting upon this, I realized that there's a, a lesson in it that the mustard seed does not want to be stored away in a drawer. It desires to be planted in the soil. The mustard seed wants to enter into the darkness of soil, and it's precisely in that that it can grow into a tree. That's what God wants to do in our lives today. God wants to enter into those areas of weakness. God desires to come into our struggles and bring new life, new hope. And the simple yet courageous act of just opening up the Bible when we're going through a difficult time and allowing God's word to come into our lives can be precisely that step that we need to make to experience God performing a miracle in our life today. So as we prepare to receive Jesus in the Eucharist, which for us who are so privileged to come here to Mass, it's again a real experience of Jesus coming to us in weakness. He comes to us like a tiny mustard seed. He comes to us in the fragile appearance of bread so that he can enter into our lives today, enter into our struggles. And let's ask Jesus from the bottom of our hearts for this grace that we too may open up our Bibles more often and allow God to work a miracle in our lives today. Let us stand and make our profession of faith by praying the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God. 
begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one the holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God the Father wants all mankind to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. And now we place some of our prayers and petitions before him. For the church, that we may allow the good seed of the gospel to take root within us and bring forth a harvest of virtue and manifestations of the reign of God, <coughs> let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Father, our bishops and priests, may they continue to be our inspiration and support in the quest to fill the world with God's love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, that God's healing love will drive the virus away from the human family and inspire all who are working on treatments and vaccines to successful conclusions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us, that we may be a leaven of compassion and justice in our society, so that the weeds of racism and oppression may be stifled. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have died, that they may be gathered into the harvest of the kingdom, especially Yolanda Nicasio, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Please join us in saying the prayer for reverence for life. Almighty God, giver of all that is good, we thank you for the precious gift of human life for life in the womb coming from your creative power, for the life of children making us glad with their freshness and promise, for life of young people hoping for a better world, for life of people who are disabled, teaching us that every life has value, for life of the elderly, witnessing to ages values of patience and wisdom. Like Blessed Mary, may we always see yes to your gift. May we defend it and promote it, from conception to its natural end, and bring us the last, O Father, to the fullness of eternal life, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Incline your merciful ear to our prayers, we ask, O Lord, and listen in kindness to the supplications of those who call on you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become, our, will become for us the bread of life. Yes, yes, we Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, a work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O 
God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion the varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants, and make it holy, as you bless the, the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered to the honour of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, <clears throat> always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, <clears throat> we make humble prayer petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all those who hold into the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious of our Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude. Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
the mystery of faith. Save us, the Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. <coughs> Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as much as you are pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith, and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants of those sinners, open your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom we continue to make all these good things, O Lord. We sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, Take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
The Lord, the gracious, the merciful, has made a memorial of his wonders. He gives food to those who fear him. Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. I wish, my Lord, to receive you with the purity, humility, and devotion with which your Most Holy Mother received you with the spirit and fervor of the saints.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. spares us well our feeble frame he knows in his hand he gently bears us rescues us from all 